Rajan, thank you very much for joining us here. So you're looking at the next billion Indians who could potentially join the internet. So what are the challenges and the opportunities there? To, just to ask a brief descriptive question before I get down to the details. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, India today has 350 million internet users. So we have another billion to go to connect all of India. You know, at, at a very simplistic level, you have two uh, challenges, right? The one, first one is how do you get them connected? Which, how do you make, how do you get, make sure that we have devices, smartphones, that are affordable enough that can be you know, bought by you know, the next several hundred million Indians. And then connectivity. I mean, the reality is today data is still very expensive in India, mobile data, right? So that's one, is how do you get them connected? And I think the second one that's interesting is once they get connected, how do you make sure, how can we make sure that the internet is truly useful and, and, and will impact their livelihoods? Because unlike the first three, 400 million Indians, for the next 500 million Indians, right, the internet is going to mean very different things. It's going to fundamentally impact their livelihood. So what are those use cases? How do you make the internet work in local languages? You know, all those sets of uh, questions. So at a, at a simplistic level, it's really those two things. So let's, let's talk about the second part first. So you've talked about languages before uh, publicly as well. You've said that you need more uh, language spread to reach more people. But what are the other things that potentially uh, could be done or the internet could do to really empower people at the bottom of the pyramid, yeah, no, the I, middle I, of the pyramid? Yeah, no, absolutely. So, so, so first is languages. And I think it's important Everybody's talking about languages, but you know, in a country of 1.2 billion, only 200 million are proficient in English, mm. right? So the 100 million Indians who've come online in the last 18 months actually mm. are not proficient in English. So not surprisingly, Hindi content consumption is growing at 84%, English is growing at 10%, so it's already happened. Uh, we need 10 languages to get to a billion Indians. So at a minimum, 10 languages need to work seamlessly, right? Keyboards, access, discovery, etc. Uh, the next big thing is how do you make sure that the services or the products work uh, you know, in the Indian environment, right? So what, what's our environment? We've got you know, slow networks, we've got patchy networks. You know, sometimes you get 3G, sometimes 2G, sometimes no connectivity, right? And also you've got acute affordability. I mean, the reality is 100 or 200 rupees is actually a lot of money for you know, the Indians beyond the first couple of 100 million Indians. So how do you build products uh, you know, for, you know, that, that work seamlessly and work well in those constraints, right? So for instance, one of the things we're doing is you know, we took YouTube offline, right? One of the fastest growing products in the history of Google in, in India because because you know, you can, you, you're connected for a very short period of time, you offline the videos, and for 48 hours you can watch the videos for as long as you want. We took maps offline, right? So, so you know, essentially offline, you know, I've actually now, I, I've come to believe that India is going to have the world's first offline internet, right? Mm -hmm. The other one is how do you make sure that products work despite, you know, slow kind of networks, right? So we launched Search Light. So essentially your operating system, you know, your Android phone will detect the speed of the network, and then if the network is, let's say, a 2G network, it'll give you a light search result. So you'll still get the results for search, but, you know, we'll take out the images and so on and so forth. And, you know, interestingly, it, it consumes only 20% of the data that a normal search result, you know, serving up a search result will do. So I think it's important that the existing products, you know, are, are tailored for this sort of environment because these new set of users are going to, you know, they're not going to be able to afford what we can afford, the first couple of hundred million. And then the other one really is, you know, the most useful uh, internet products, especially as we think about the next billion Indians, haven't been invented yet. So it's going to be very important for us to have a thriving, vibrant innovation right. ecosystem, right? right. And, and for that, we need more developers, we need more investment, we need... Uh, you know, easier, easier ways of doing business and so on and so forth. Hmm. So we're, we're also in some ways uh, innovating for deficiencies. I mean, yeah. I, as I can see, a lot of uh, engineering capability and effort must be going in trying to figure out how do you keep things offline? Uh, how do you account for uh, speeds which are wavering uh, all the time? So is that, does that cause a disconnect with organizations like yours? No, I think... I think or within look, organizations it, like I, yours? I would say, look, I think it's taken even a company like Google, you know, some, some time to really understand how different it is, right? The environment is, you know, if you think about it, right, it used to be products were built in Mountain View, uh, right? And they were built for very high speed networks where affordability, you know, the average consumer is spending $50, $70 per month on data. And all of a sudden now you have, you know, it's essentially 30 rupee sachet data points, data packs, right, in 2G networks. So, so I think it's taken a while, but I think we, we, you know, we are very focused on this now. We understand that this is what it's going to take. And uh, if you look at all our products, we've got massive efforts to make sure that we are re-architecting some of these products ground up, but also really thinking about what other kinds of products would be very useful, right? Mm. Uh, you know, we launched this very exciting initiative called Helping Women Get Online, mm. where we are focused on uh, only, you know, of the 350 million users in India who are on the internet, only 100 million are from rural India. Mm. So of the 800 million rural Indians, only 100 million from rural India, and only 10% of them are women. Mm. Uh, and we did a lot of research to understand why that is, and we launched a frontline, you know, on the ground activation initiative 
to go to the village level and then educate you know women uh, about the value of the internet what we find is you know they are most intrigued not by entertainment or messaging or even search for entertainment right what they're most intrigued by is how can the internet you know the eyes light up when they find out you know here are all the government programs that they should be getting right here's how their agricultural output can be increased here's how they can solve some of the you know educate you know the healthcare issues for themselves or their families i mean these basic things that we in many ways have taken for granted are the most valuable things right for this next several hundred million rural uh, indian uh, internet users so so i mean it's going to be very interesting right so uh, a question on infrastructure so what's your outlook i mean you know a lot of this is obviously pegged around infrastructure and the way it develops now obviously india has seen some uh, scale up from when we went from landline to mobile uh, but the pace at which data has moved obviously as is now well documented has not been the same while it continues to expand it's not expanded at a good quality and so on so what's your own outlook and how are you shaping your uh, thoughts and vision around that so look i mean our, our view is you know you know from 350 million so you've got two problems right first how do you get people connected and then second though how do you give them high quality connectivity right so that they can actually really experience the the internet i think the 3g 4g technologies will probably take us from 350 million to maybe 5 600 million but if we really want to collect a billion indians i think we need radically different sets of technologies right whether it's loon from google whether it's facebook's technologies whether it's the stuff that microsoft's talking about because you know essentially you need a very different uh, cost point mm. to be able to reach you know truly the next connect the next billion users and the traditional set of technologies just don't get you there right because it costs a certain amount and yeah you, you, I mean you can't be multiplying dots yeah you just can't uh, yeah. uh, right so so you need a radical you know you need mm. a disruptive new technologies and i think that's why we are excited about technology like loon for instance mm. right where the the cost balloons, yeah. is significantly lower therefore you can price it significantly lower and obviously we have in partnerships with telcos mm. but the actual capital outlays you know the, the economics look very very different um, so i think 3g 4g will get us to 550 million we need a different set of technologies to get to maybe from there to a billion and then the other one is how do you improve the quality of the uh, the connectivity and i think there we are very very bullish on wifi mm. you know we've launched uh, we have Rail this partnership mm. with railtel we took the first station live here in mumbai you know you get 20 mbps download 40 mbps PS upload i mean it's absolutely fantastic and and you know what we're finding is that you know users are just amazed at how fast it can be you know they you know kind of even if they're there for 10 minutes i mean they're able to consume so much content and then they'll offline a lot of content watch it on the train etc so we'll do 100 stations this year you know we'll do 400 stations over 3 years and when we finish 3 years you're talking about 3 to 400 million indians who will have access to wifi just through stations right but imagine if if as a as a nation you know government private sector telcos other players we come together to say you know how do we create this a wifi nation because i actually think that could be you know 3g will provide some level of connectivity but if we really want to create pervasive high speed connectivity for a billion people i think wifi is going to have to play a big role so we are quite quite right. bullish about but that. are you going to play then like in the case of the railways are you going to play the combination of a private company with a strong public utility outlook no so so look for us we are not in that business right i mean this was really an initiative because we really want pilot, to get access yeah. you no know, we want to really get access out there right because you know i've always felt that look let's have people experience high speed internet you know if you had 400 stations 400 million people go through these and you you know you'd be amazed at the kind of receptivity that we're seeing in mumbai central right I mean, it's just shocking because people can watch high definition video all of a sudden right uh, so so you know the, for us it's much more you know let's get people connected let's get people trialing it right but i think you know it's a combination of the government the telcos and other other players in the ecosystem that should really think about what does it i mean you know i go to vietnam a lot and china a lot and some of these other countries thailand for instance right you know thailand has hundreds of thousands of wifi hotspots we have like 5000 country of 1.2 billion we have a couple of thousand hotspots right why does thailand has you know half a million spots hotspots so um so i think it's it's you know we need to come together to kind of think through this right. it's not easy right mm. it's not easy right uh, but but i think we need solutions like this right so when you map out your billion uh, as a target yeah. uh, or or one point or the next billion next billion uh, how do you i mean how do you see the progression you know so let's say the first uh, 50 so million 350 million are online already are online yeah. but do you see the progression in the same pace at which uh, it came in i mean so far or do you see the acceleration or so you know do you see so look i i think batches? you know basically it took 10 years mm. right for us to go from um 100 million to 200 million users right, right? uh sorry no from from 10 to 100 million 100 to 200 was 3 years mm. uh, 200 to 300 was 18 months and we adding about 6 million users a month now mm. so 400 million you know sometimes soon um i i do think look we'll probably maintain the current pace mm. uh maybe until we get to 4 500 million users but i think beyond that we're going to need fundamentally fundamentally innovation mm. right you know handset prices 
smartphones need to get affordable while maintaining quality, right? So today you can buy a good quality handset for about 5,000 rupees, maybe 4,000 rupees, you know, a decent quality phone. But the reality is 60% of phone shipments last quarter were feature phones. And the average price of a feature phone, as we know, is less than 1,000 rupees. So if you really want, you know, smartphone penetration to be at 100%, we need to think about quality smartphones at orders of magnitude lower pricing than we have today. And I think that's going to require, so that innovation on that front, innovation on connectivity, innovation on use cases. So I think we'll maintain the current pace. Right, and that next, was my next question. Yeah. So we're obviously depending on or looking out for innovation happening in, on, on many planes uh, and many platforms. So which is going to lead and who's going to lead that? No, I think different, uh, look, I mean, all, yeah. yeah, so I, I, you know, our view is, look, innovation needs to be open uh, and, you know, you just need to have a fertile environment for innovation, right? So let's take sort of the connectivity innovation, right? So we are very excited about Loon. I mean, we actually think that Loon could be one of the solutions that will get the next billion connected, right? At, at very affordable rates. So, you know, we're working with the government on that. I mean, that technology is already kind of reasonably well built up, right? So we need to run the trials in India and then figure out. And then similarly, other companies like Facebook, Microsoft, and so on will do that. So that's on the connectivity side. I think on Android, as you know, you know, we continue to work on Android to make it more and more affordable. You know, one of the reasons the smartphone revolution really took off in India was other than data, was when smartphone prices came below 10,000 rupees. And then we saw another big spurt when it fell below 6,000 rupees, mm -hmm. right? So we just need to keep breaking these price points. I mean, we obviously have the software, then the hardware ecosystem, you know, continues to kind of evolve. So that's on the hardware side. And I think on the use cases side, that is where Startup India mm -hmm. is really gonna make a big difference, right? Because, you know, if you think about it, what are those use cases where the rural user is gonna be very, very excited? Obviously, they're gonna be excited about the traditional use cases, messaging, social, video, entertainment's a big deal. YouTube's, you know, on fire, right? But those may not be the, you know, the real use case. You know, they're not, they may not be able to change their lives, mm. right? What are agricultural prices? How do they get more output from their agricultural produce? How do they look after their kids? What do they think about healthcare? Because there's no hospitals anywhere around, right? So those kinds of use cases, I think, will come from innovation. And Startup India, uh, not just the initiative, but Startup India, you know, sta you know the Startup Nation, uh, is going to be absolutely critical. And I think, look, these are all happening, you know, at the same time, right? Uh, this is, these are not sequential. I don't think we can ever play these sure. things in a sequential mm. way. So they, they have to all kind of happen at the same time, and, you know, it's happening. Right. So, last question. So, 2016, so what's the one thing that you're most excited about? Look, I think this is the year of video. Mm. Uh, um, you know, uh, sometime over the next couple of months, online video will cross 100 million users, right? Online video in India, so 350 million users. And you know, what, what amazes me about that is this is before broadband. Mm. Imagine once broadband comes. And I think that second thing that if I'm excited about this year is gonna be hopefully the launch of uh, the first broadband network. Mm. Uh, so it's the year of online video. Right, that's a good note to end on. Thank yeah, you so much. Absolutely. Sharad.